This is a lesson on the domain and range of logarithmic functions. Let's begin by taking a look at the logarithmic parent. And this is the log base 2, but what we're going to talk about would apply to any base that we want to use. Uh, here's a graph of the log base 2. Notice some of the key things uh, is that it approaches the y-axis, but it never actually reaches it. So our vertical asymptote here is at uh, 0. Uh, that's our y-axis, and so we never quite reach zero. Also, we'll notice that there's a key point at uh, right here at zero, or rather at one zero. Uh, this is a point where it crosses, and then a, another key point here at two one, uh, because again the log base two of two is one to the first power equals two. And those are just some key points for the parent function. What we're interested in here is finding the domain and range of this parent function. I'm just going to label domain D right here. Remember domain are the possible x values for the function. In this case we know that this function never reaches on x, it never reaches the y-axis, so it never reaches x equals zero. But as we note in the graph that you can see to the right, the graph actually goes to infinity as you go off to the right. So this domain would be everything beginning at zero and then continuing all the way to infinity. Or if you wanted to write this in another notation, you could say where x is greater than zero. Or we could even do it in set notation. In set notation, we would use a parentheses on this side or rather in the interval notation, excuse me, we could use a parenthesis on this side to say that it never reaches zero and an infinity sign over here to show that it approaches infinity but never actually reaches it, of course. And that would also have a parenthesis then. Uh, now, our range. The range in a logarithmic function is actually very easy because the range for all logarithmic functions are the same, no matter what we add to the function, no matter what we do to the function, uh, the range is always going to be all real numbers. Because you could use any or you could get any real number as the result of taking a log. You'll notice again that this graph goes to negative infinity going down that way. It also goes to, impost, uh, to positive infinity going up. So the range is all reals. In fact, the range will be all real numbers uh, for any logarithmic function that you use. Again, we could write this using interval notation by showing infinity negative on this side and going to positive infinity on this side. And each would have a parenthesis to show that you don't ever quite reach negative or positive infinity. So let's look at a change that we can make to this graph. This time I've added a plus 4. <clears throat> Pardon me, this is added on the outside of the graph. Uh, this plus 4 actually has the effect of moving the entire graph up by four places. You'll notice that right here, this is the place where it crossed the x-axis before. Now that point has been moved up four places. Uh, and you're still approaching the y-axis but never reaching it. Uh, so again, when we get ready to do our domain, we realize that x never reaches 0 and again x continues all the way to infinity on this side again if we wanted to write that as x is greater than 0 we could or we could do it in interval notation and say x is between 0 and positive infinity like this again with a parenthesis on both sides Notice that moving the graph up or down by adding or subtracting a number like 4 out there uh, did not in any way affect our domain. And as I said a minute ago on the range, the range is never affected uh, because the range is still all real numbers uh, in this case. And again, we could write that as the interval notation between negative and positive infinity like that. This line right here actually continues on down on the graph it just gets very very close to the y-axis without ever reaching it again the asymptote is at x equals zero 
Notice that logarithms do not have horizontal asymptotes, they only have vertical asymptotes. Okay, now let's take a look at one more example here. This time we have put the plus 4 inside the parentheses, we're actually something we're taking the log of. This is considered inside the function. Uh, this takes the form of x minus h. When you're looking at x minus h, in this case the number is actually negative 4, meaning we moved the graph four places to the left. You'll notice that now I have a new asymptote. It's right over here. In fact, the new asymptote is at x equals negative 4. That's important because this time that did change our domain. Our domain in this one is actually approaching negative 4. So we can say our domain is x is between negative 4 and positive infinity. Or we could write x is greater than negative 4. Or using interval notation, we could say x is from negative 4 to positive infinity. That would be our domain on this problem. So when we move left or right, adding a number inside, like plus 4, moved it left 4. That actually changed our domain minus 4. If we were to subtract a number, if it said x minus 4, for example, that would actually move our graph 4 to the right of the y-axis, also move our asymptote, our vertical asymptote, 4 to the right. If you can locate that asymptote where it moves right and left, then you will know where your domain starts. Notice that there's never an equal sign there uh, with negative 4 or any other number because you never reach the asymptote. It's just a place that it approaches but never reaches. So we could even have more complex functions with logs like this. Here we have log base 2 of 4x plus 12. You'll notice if you're looking at the graph right now that it actually moved 3 to the left. And you can always figure this out even without looking at the graph by taking whatever numbers in front of x and dividing all the numbers in the parentheses by that. Uh, so that you can see, especially we're interested in 12 divided by 4 right here, which tells us that the new asymptote, it actually moved, since that was plus 3, it actually moved left 3, so our new vertical asymptote right here is at x equals negative 3, because it moved left 3. So that tells us again that our new domain begins at negative 3, and it goes to positive infinity again. Again, I can write this as x is greater than negative 3, or I can use interval notation x is between negative 3 and positive infinity with parentheses on both sides. And that will be it. Remember again, our range for all log functions is still y is greater, or y is rather all real numbers. So we don't have to really worry about changing that when it moves around. I can even take a graph, or rather a function, that isn't graphed like this one right here, and I can look at this function, and I know that the only thing that matters as far as my domain are the numbers inside this parentheses right here. This number in front, this negative in front, it flips the graph over, it reflects it over the x-axis, this 2 actually vertically stretches the graph. This 4 on the end moves the graph up, but none of that affects the domain or the range for that matter. The only thing that does is whatever is in that parentheses. So again, if I take what's inside that parentheses and I just simply divide it by whatever number's in front of x, like that, then I can look at what's left. This is really minus 5 right here. That tells me that this graph moved to the right, remember minus because it's the form of x minus h. The minus 5 tells me that this graph, among all the other things it did, moved to the right five places. So my new vertical asymptote is at x equals 5. Therefore my domain starts at 5. And so x is greater than 5. Or if you want to write it in interval notation, excuse me, x is between 5 
and positive infinity. And it's really as simple as that. So all of these other numbers that you see in the graph or in the function don't matter as far as the domain is concerned. It's really just the ones uh, inside the parentheses of the log that are going to cause the graph to move right and left that affect the domain. Again, if you're interested in the range, the range hasn't changed. The range will be all real numbers uh, and it can be written simply as from negative infinity to positive infinity. That's the values of y for the range. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I hope it's helped you. Uh, if you have and you'd like to see other lessons, I have other lessons that you can get uh, in on mymatheducation.com. Uh, in mymatheducation.com, uh, or rather, my math education on uh, YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for watching this one. I hope you'll come back for more and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos. Uh, thanks for watching and come back to see us.